Thank you, Simon, for the introduction. Um, yeah, just call me Gus. That's a shortcut. Do not try to pronounce my full name. It's too complicated. I blame my parents for that. And yes, I'm the head of AI at Car Sales. And just want to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, since two years ago, I fell in love with this AI. And since then, I eat and poo-poo AI every day, right? Not just at work, but I also use AI to actually solve my day-to-day -day problem. And one particular problem that I, I, I tried to solve recently is generating baby names for my newborn baby. <laughs> right? It's coming in one month's time, and the story is like this. Six months ago, we thought it's actually a girl. Both me and my wife spent one month just trying to find a name. You know how hard it is, right? To find a baby's name. Then the uh, sonographer told us the news, it's a boy. Right? <laughs> so I was thinking, rather than spending another four weeks, I'll just maybe spend a couple hours, this programmer's head thinking, I'll write an AI that generates a baby name. Right? So I thought to myself, wouldn't it be very cool if I can combine a Japanese name, Russian name, together, get the AI to actually learn how it's pronounced, and come up with something like this, Vladimasaki, right? Isn't that fun, right? So here I go, Whoop, sorry. I refill the, the next slides. So I start downloading the Russian names and Japanese names, thousands of them from internet. And I build a very simple LSTM AI model and train my AI with it. And after 15 minutes, start spitting out some names. Very creative, right? It's Kuti, Rosahiro, Kilipiko. So what was the outcome of this practice? It doesn't sound like Russian at all. And I found out, actually, the name that I downloaded is actually wrong. It's not Russian, it's actually Greek names. So see how important the data is in AI. Right? <laughs> the second problem sounds very ugly. Why? Because AI does not know the concept of a well-pronounced name. It doesn't care. It's only a concept for us human. So fail. And <laughs> that's the most important one, getting the stare of death from my wife, just attempting this. So any of you guys, do not try this with your pregnant wife, right? <laughs> All right. So it's a failed experiment, obviously, right? But it's fun, right? And now back to the main topic. So I work at car sales, and I'm very sure many of you know what car sales is. It's a portal which facilitates car buying and selling, and uh, we support private and dealer. And at any given time, we have about 230,000 cars. And every day, we're getting around 5,000 cars. Apart from cars, we have bikes, boat trucks, any things with wheels on it. Boats got steering wheels, right? <laughs> so especially today, uh, I want to uh, show you uh, Cyclops 2.0. This is the second generation of Cyclops engine that me and my team built at Car Sales. And what it is is an image recognition engine which has a superhuman ability to recognize a car, make model body down to the trim level. The accuracy is around 98%. And I'm not going to just say it, but I'm going to get you to be involved in these very simple games. It's fun. Can you all tell me what this car is? Yanda Atari? Very easy, right? Should be very obvious. There is a writing there, there's a logo there. Okay, what I have here on my phone is an app that I wrote that talks to Cyclops server. Cyclops live in the clouds. When I take a photo of that car, the photo will be sent to the Cyclops server and it will tell us what car it is. Okay, let me try to snap that projector. It's a very obscure angle, trying not to get myself killed. I am sure it is Hyundai i30 hatch series PD badge active. Okay. You got one point, Cyclops one point. <laughs> Next, what is this? Outlander. Anyone know what the trim level is? <laughs> no? All right, let's ask Cyclops. I am sure it is Mitsubishi Outlander SUV series ZK badge LS. Could be wrong. Let's see what the answer. Ooh, it's correct. So you got one and a half score. Cyclops got two, because you don't get the trim. Right? <laughs> Next one, what is this? Trickier from the side, there is no logo. I30? I30? Cannot be I30. Or oh, they go I30 at the start, right? I'll give you a tips here. Anyone? No? Volkswagen? OK, I'll go with the Volkswagen. Got a few answers there. All right, let's try. 
I am sure it is Holden Cruise Wagon Series JH Series 2 Badge CD. And it is right. Okay, last question. What is that? <laughs> Can I answer cat, rubbish bin, banana, skin, right? Has to be a car. Anyone? Ford? Ford Skoda? You know what the trim level? No? All right, let's give it a go. I am sure it is Ford Cougar SUV Series TF Mkii Badge Titanium. Yeah, it's all the way right. So this is what AI can do today in computer vision. It's beat the hell out of us. <laughs> so you probably wonder now, where does it all begin? Why do we build this? It's fun, but what's the purpose? Like generating baby names? <laughs> like uh, all TV series, it's all started with season one, right? Uh, Cyclops 1.0, that's where it all started. And what was the problem you're trying to solve with Cyclops 1.0? This is Jane. Jane is a one of our digital photographer. Every day she come and visit lots of car dealership, taking lots of photos of car. These are the photos that comes to our sites. You see that online, on, on our apps, on our websites. And uh, once she finished taking the photo at night, she come back home, she uploaded all those photos into our software called Media Library. So once she finished uploading for every single photo, she need to select those angle. Is it a front three quarter driver? Is it a steering wheel, dashboard? And there are like 500 photos, just for her alone. It takes about half an hour a day for her. And there are 80 photographers who have gone through the same experience. And multiplied by 25 days a year, it costs us a quarter million dollars. Just for 18 million mouse clicks. Very expensive mouse clicks. Right? So that's the problem we're trying to solve. <laughs> so what's the solution? Obviously, we build Cyclops 1.0. And for every photo that comes into Cyclops, automatically it will classify the angle. It's a dashboard, rear three quarter, boot, it's done automatically in real time. And we integrate it into a media library. And since then, none of our photographer need to actually select those annoying drop down. And if Cyclops not to show, you see that they actually color the, the last drop down in yellow. So for them to verify and correct it. And this, that correction goes back to the training loop. So Cyclops will be more clever next month during the training, next training cycles. So that's. That's actually the beauty of, of, of AI, is keep learning. And then since the success of Cyclops, we think of other way to actually apply it through, throughout our business. We found out actually it's not the photo that coming into our system, it's not just from photographer. We also get photo from dealer and private seller. These two combined equal to four times the amount of photo coming from photographers. And now with Cyclops, it's all classified for free. And now you probably wonder why we care so much about classifying angles in the photo. Like many people say, right? Uh, image equal to a, th a thousand words, that's true. If you know the content of the image, you can do a lot more. And this is one of the applications we're currently building. It's called visual comparison. Imagine you're buying a car for a newborn baby, and you, want, you already narrow down your search to three or four cars. And you're, now you want to know how spacious the passenger seat is. So with these tools, I can simply go to comparison mode, select those three, uh, four cars. I can see straight away what's the photo of the passenger seat. One of them is more spacious than the others. You can make decision quickly. You press the put there, you can see the put photo for, for all those forecasts. Imagine if you don't have these tools, you have to go to photo gallery for each one of them. You have to press next, 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 next until you find the right photo. See how annoying it is. This dramatically increased the user experience. The product number two that we already deployed a couple of months ago is called Photo Quality Advisor. Whenever you sell car through uh, our system now, um, there is a, a, a tool that simply check all of the photos you uploaded. This one here, this guy, is selling a Mazda CX-5, 2017. He uploaded five photos, but he forgotten to upload two important photos, the passenger seat and the put. And because Cyclops know what the photo that you uploaded, in real time, we can warn them, hey, you're missing these two photos, which is very important for SUV buyer. So this in turn gives the uh, benefit for both buyer and seller. Buyer will get more informative advertisement, seller will get more interest out of the advertisement. So the third product that utilizes Cyclops 2.0 engine is called Snap and Sell. This is already out in both Android and iOS. You actually can try yourself. What it is is it's a Snap and Sell is a product for you to actually sell a car through our native apps, Android or iOS. So obviously when you sell a car, you have to tell us first what car you're selling, right? Mazda 3 or whatever it is, right? Down to the trim level. The old process, the UX is really, really bad. <coughs> this is how it actually works before. You 
have to go through a list of makes and then list of models and then a subset of list of batch and then you select the, the fuel. It's very annoying and prone to error. Not many, many of you know what, what the batch of your car unless the car is obviously showing the batch at the back. With the Cyclops 2.0, we re redesigned the whole UI. Simply just take a photo of the back of your car. Snap, and we know exactly what it is. Correct it if it is wrong. And then you select what's the fuel type. Unfortunately, Cyclops does not have a smell capability yet. So <laughs> it does not know whether it's actually petrol or diesel. We're still working on it. So you click on it, that's it. That's the end of it. That's how easy it is. <coughs> so now, how do we build Cyclops? For any of your curious techie there, obviously, the answer is TensorFlow. It's my favorite <laughs> tools, right? It's an open source library by Google. Uh, many speakers in, uh, yesterday already mentioned this. And we're using uh, an architecture called Convolution Neural Network. It's uh, one type of architecture which is really, really good at recognizing image. And especially, we use a model for Inception version 3 and version 4. This is what the Inception version 3 diagram is. It's not only rocket science, it's really, really clever. It's designed how uh, our visual cortex actually works in recognizing objects. Image come through from the left, and at the end, it's just, uh, the output will be the category, what kind of object it is. It's as simple as that. And why so many layers? Because each individual layer of those layers is called convolution layers. What it really is, is just a shape detection. So when it recognizes certain shape uh, present, it will just activate. It will just tell you, hey, I found this. That first layer there is detecting a very simple shape, diagonal, vertical, horizontal line. The output of, the, uh, of these layers is being forwarded next to the next layer, which detect a little bit more complex shapes, square, circle, hexagon, triangle, which is, you can see, it's made up from, this, from the previous simple shapes. Again, the output is being sent forward to the next layer, which detect a lot more complex shapes, like the steering, uh, steering wheel, the AC control, start engine button, and finally, the evidence of all of these shapes that was found being sent to the final classification layer. And because I found all of this evidence, it must be a dashboard. It cannot be an engine or headlight. That's how simple it is. You know. It's not really rocket science. However, to train this model is actually very, very hard. Why? You, have, you need a very fast machine like this and millions of images, which not many of us have, including us too. So luckily, there is a technique called transfer learning so it's a very, very clever technique, and the easiest way to explain this is actually to bring it back to our human domain. Just that's that person with the hat there is me, right? I'm trying to learn calculus. You all know in order to learn calculus, I need to learn basic math first, right? I wasn't that clever back then. I play lots of computer games, right? <laughs> so it takes me five years in primary school to learn basic math. One year in university learning calculus. What a really waste of time. Why not instead? I have Bob here, right? My neighbor is very clever. He already knows basic math and algebra. I don't care about his algebra. All I simply want to do, open up his head, steal the basic math, stick it into my head, <laughs> right? Now I save five years of my time. I just li li really need to learn calculus, one year. So I can play more computer games, right? <laughs> so this is how it really works. Now if you go back to the inception, right? How does it really work here? Why it really, really works? If you think about it, right, if I actually download just the pre-trained brain from somebody else that classify cats, dogs, cars, and then plane, whatever it is, right, they all, uh, the first few layers is detecting the same simple shapes anyway. Horizontal line, diagonal line, hexagon, triangle. Why do we need to re retrain this layer? You don't need to, we just reuse them. All we simply need to do, just train the, the final classification layer. That's all we need to do. And because of this, it brings down the training complexity down to up to like 100 times to make it more practical. However, it's not just all, all good. This transfer learning thing inherit problem called flip invariance. What it really is, if I pass in a mouse to Cyclops, it will tell you this is a mouse. It's right. However, if it is the mouse facing that way being sent to Cyclops, it will see, also say a mouse. Well, what's the problem? It's not really a problem for most image recognition. However, for us, it's a big problem. We want to classify these two photo differently. Side driver, side passenger. So how do we solve this problem without doing a brain surgery? So luckily, there is a very simple solution. But before I reveal that, if I actually force train AI with, uh, with uh, these two category, that's the accuracy I'm getting. Not really acceptable. Close to a random number. 
So the solution is very simple. What we really need to do simply is just get rid of the right part of the image. And once you've done this, now the existence of features on the left does not actually happen on the right and the other way around. The tire happen and uh, 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 exists in both image, but if you look at it, the tail light and then the Ferrari logo, they all in different, different image. So with this, now we can bring down the accuracy up to 97% without doing any complicated work, which I don't like. So crisis averted until we come into this annoying <laughs> car. <right? laughs> so what to do? Destroy all the Beatles, right? Uh, Unfortunately, that's not uh, a viable solution. So luckily, just by providing more training sets, we actually supply four times more training sets just for people. The AI now, more sensitive to picking up all these little differences. Like the tail light is uh, red color, the headlight is white color, right? And there is a side mirror at the front. So it starts picking these this, this differences. Crisis averted. It's, it's back to around 92%, not 97%, but who cares about people anyway? Right? So we're moving on to Cyclops 2.0. So then we embark into journey developing Cyclops 2.0 with the knowledge that we already have. Cyclops 1.0, the challenge is not that hard. Why? Look at these pictures. It's so different. Like my five years old boy, well, he's not born yet. Five years from now, he will be able to tell the difference very easily, right? However, Cyclops 2.0, that's the kind of things that we have to be dealing with. One is 318D, the other one is 320D. The, 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 the difference is so little there. And this is lucky because there is this black bar there, but most other BMW model normally don't have any visual indicator. It's just the, the, the logo at the top upper, upper right corner there. That's actually determine the car. And you probably wonder, this may be because of the image resolution, but this is the kind of image resolution we have to be dealing with. The reason is because we have to actually train cycles with 10 years worth of uh, car. If you sell cars seven years ago, we still need to be able to support it. Back then, <coughs> digital camera, well, or if smartphone, the camera's not that great, so people uploading low res photo. So we need a different solution. We actually need to think harder. That's why we upgrade our model into Inception version 4, and we build on top of this model. And we're still using a transfer learning, but we transfer learn all the layers. So we let all the layers do what you learn. And because of that, then you know, we're going back to the first problem. It takes six months to actually train using GPU machine. This is the fastest machine that in, in AWS. By six months, when the training's done, a lot more new cars model coming, it defeats the purpose. It does not recognize it. So it's not really practical. So how do we solve it? We use a technique uh, called distributed training. It's not really, again, it's not really rocket science. It's just like multiple GPU as you're training the same model. You have five GPU, it's approximately five times faster. So this is the training parameter for Cyclops 2.0. We use 10 of them, 10 Tesla GPU running non-stop for three weeks. And we use one million images. So in summary, the Cyclops 1.0 uh, engine actually uh, saved us around three quarter million dollar. 2.0, we haven't done any assessment yet, it's just recently out. However, the most important is not that money there, but actually it brings up lots of, lots of competitive, competitive advantage into our business. And for a company like car sales, we own the 95% market share of car uh, selling and buying in Australia. This is really important. We want to look after you very well. We want you to have the best experience possible so you don't run away to our competitors. So this is the way for us to actually protect our ecosystem. Um, that's the end of the talk, actually. And thank you for listening. And <laughs> any questions?